responsibilities. Uh, we are always here, everybody's responsible for design. Um, but sometimes it feels like if everybody's responsible for design, then nobody is. Um, and it seems like a leader question, but who do you think is responsible for design? Well, I know you don't want me to say this, but uh, everyone kind of is. <laughs> and um, the idea is that as cheesy as it sounds, you're working together as a team and your goal is as a team at the end of it to produce something good. Now, how you go about doing that is a good question. Um, in some cases, you have these very isolated teams, almost like silos, where you have the developers and they prepare a design and you know it's this complete thing and now they hand it off to the developers to implement. You don't really want that, that kind of uh, experience. And I mean, I've, I've had some experience of that in the past. Um, I work with, on material components for the web. Yep. And so by the necessity of that, that's pretty much what happened there because we had the material design spec and then we had to go ahead and we had to implement that as different components for the web. Um, that becomes a very challenging process because I feel that the interaction between a designer and a developer should be a dialogue, not, not something where there's a prepared design that gets implemented because there's always something missing there. What happens in this particular situation... And you lose context, right? You lose context, yeah. And I, I think it's important for developers to bring some of that context into this discussion as well. Um, for example, where it comes to platform specifics. Like the behavior of the platform. The behavior of the platform, for ex and you know all of the caveats that come with the platform, and all of the positive aspects of it as well that you can really, you know, seize and put into your design. Um, I think that's an important discussion. For example, where it comes to things like typography, the web is full of problems because yeah. fonts are big. And if you're making your end users download them, you're going to have to consider what happens while the fonts are downloading, what happens once the fonts do download. You know, do you swap in a system font by the downloaded font? Do you wait a while before you do that, just so you give your user a chance not to see that jarring transition? And these are all learn things that as a developer you can have the designers with, particularly if they're new to the platform. Do you feel that your responsibility is to support the designer in, in, as well as being responsible for the experience as well? Or is that just really based on the relationships that you have with the designer that you feel that you may have um, had to take hold of that responsibility? I, I don't see it as much of an individual responsibility. Again, it, it's kind of a shared responsibility where you're only really as good both the designer and the developer are only really as good as what comes out at the end of it, right? Because you can have the most amazing design and if it's not realistic to implement it according to the restrictions of the particular platform you're going to implement it in, then it's it's not going to work, right? So why call yourself a developer anyway? I mean, it almost is like you're one step away if you're taking the responsibilities of behavior from the user perspective rather than from just a purely visual design perspective. But like how are users going to interact with the product or whatever? Um, why not just be a designer? Well, I think it's really a matter of focus. As a designer, I wouldn't do as good a job as I do currently as okay. a developer. Um, whereas for a lot of designers, it would probably be the other way around. So I think we can frame the whole thing in a matter of focus. So I know I won't be doing design full time, but I feel like I should know enough about a designer's work process, about a designer's tools, about a, a designer's language in order to be able to collaborate with them and you know, present problems to them in their language and present solutions to them in their language. The same way, I feel that it's useful for a designer to know a little bit about development, not be able to you know, put up a website together and ship it to production, nothing like that, but know a little bit about what it's like to develop a website based yeah. on a design so that they can then communicate with me in a similar way. I mean, that's, um, I mean there's, a, there's a sort of thing that Nick Butcher, one of the uh, design advocates uh, our, on our team, he talks about ceilings and floors, especially when it comes to material design. Um, and so some people see, uh, designers, developers see uh, material design as a limitation, that it's a, it's a ceiling because it makes you design products right. that look like Google. But his perception, uh, and the way he sees it is, no, it's actually a flaw. It's you build up upon that. And I kind of like see the similarity. So in a sense, the de design and developer is, that's the focus rather than the limitation. Right. Would you say that's true? Yes, I, I think that's true. 
uh, I think that it's important for us to know a little bit beyond our own core jobs because that's the only way that you're actually going to be able to work as a team together. I mean, if you're living in different worlds, it's going to be very hard to uh, work together. So, so you have your specialism, but mm -hmm. that's the starting point rather than the end point. Yes, exactly. That's what I feel. I think in that case, um, it is not really limiting, but it's more exhausting because you have to have much more feedback loops with the designer into can do this, what else do you think could work? I can't place the underline in exactly that position because I don't have control over that. Thank you.